You may recall the creation of the Wayland cursor shape protocol from a few years back. Basically, the idea is traditionally, there wasn't an idea of a Wayland cursor theme. Cursors on Wayland are themed by the client, by the application. Now, in some cases, like say, a video game, yeah, you're gonna draw some custom cursor, but some random text editor, some random video player, your browser, most applications you run, they don't care how the cursor looks, and it shouldn't really be their responsibility to make sure the cursor is themed correctly, but that's the way it was being done. And the cursor shape protocol allows this to be done on the server side, dealing with a number of very long running issues like, hey, why are random applications with different toolkits rendering my cursor at a different size? The reason for it is because you don't have some random variable set, some dependency installed so it can listen to a variable, and it, it, there's just no way to make it be consistent without dealing with each of these different ways to handle it. If it's done by the server, you're basically good. Also, it opens the door for things like SVG cursors. So previously the way things were done is different size cursors basically were just with different rastered version of the cursor, meaning you need a bunch of different versions of every single cursor in the cursor theme. With an SVG cursor or with a vector cursor, you can just render the cursor at the size you want it to be at. It's going to be crystal clear and you don't need all of these extra files. Now, you still need the extra files because there's gonna be legacy applications that don't use the new solution, but in the long run, when things have all been migrated over, it'll be much, much smoother. Now, the cursor shape protocol was opened over two years ago by Simon Sir. Actually, yeah, okay, just barely over two years ago, maybe like two weeks and two years, whatever. Not important, the exact time. This protocol went relatively smooth. It got all of the acts it needed, it got all of the implementations, and has been merged for quite a while now. I talked about it, I believe, back when it first happened. However, you might notice a distinct lack of GNOME here. No GNOME in the acts, no GNOME toolkit, no Mutter implementation, no GNOME whatsoever. So, as it stood at this point, Basically, you could do this solution for everything else, but then you need this fallback for GTK, which basically puts us in the exact same situation we're in right now, where GTK and especially libidwaiter applications just, in many cases on things outside GNOME, really do not handle cursors correctly. You've probably seen a giant cursor in a libidwaiter application this has been reported as an issue. There are a number of things being worked on to make sure that's no longer a problem, but it's still there, at least today. So, with this merged and everyone else being on board, when it came time to bring it to GTK and to GNOME, this is what happened. Implement Cursor Shape V1. This implements that protocol we just talked about. Let me know if there's a more specific place that GTK Wayland Cursor Get Enum would fit. Also, would a GTK3 version of this patch be accepted? Not sure if it is maintenance only now. Thanks, Max. And after the protocol discussion was already had, everybody else agreed to it, now we see the first pushback on the protocol. As long as Mudder does not support this protocol, it is relatively unexciting for us. Get it into Mudder, then we'll look at it. I will say that I don't think this protocol fits very well into Wayland, and I would be happier if Mutter did not accept it. At this point, just don't refer to GTK as GTK. It's the GNOME toolkit. If GNOME doesn't want something, it's not going into the GNOME toolkit. Now, there was an open issue in Mutter at the time, but it was just an open issue, and didn't really have any discussion going on. Literally two comments, and one of them is from two days ago. So realistically, a singular comment about this being done. No work actually progressing here, at least. From David Edmondson of KDE, if concerned with testing patch can be tested against KWIN, which supports the standard, GTK apps run there too. 
And from someone whose account is now deleted, I couldn't find who they were in the archive, so I'm not actually sure who this was. Honestly, what Wayland was or is in some ideological sense doesn't matter. What matters is making the free software desktop better. I don't want to inconvenience the maintainers GTK to support specific Wayland protocols that they don't like. But on the other hand, these protocols were created to solve problems that really exist. This protocol doesn't need to fit into Wayland, it is Wayland by unanimous vote. I don't want to waste your time, and I suspect trying to discuss whether things are Waylandy is a dead end for productive discussion. 100% true. This is what stalls so many protocol discussions. Not, is this a problem people have? Is this something we should resolve? It's, does this fit into the ideology of Wayland? Is this a fit for Wayland? So much over history was ruined by that discussion. And I'm so glad I see it brought up way less often. What we want is a good solution for consistent cursor themes and scaling across Wayland clients. And it would be nice if we didn't need to maintain downstream patches for something if it's not a big burden to maintain upstream. Now, Sebastian Wick did actually go and make a patch for this, saying, what do we really gain with this? We gain a compositor that now has to care about content loading and theming and all these good things that are really better left on the client side. I really wish that I stopped seeing GNOME people do this, because that is not even remotely the issue that exists with the protocol, right? If that was the issue you had with it, you would have gotten more involved in the discussion of the protocol, discussed, hey, is this a good idea to have in Wayland in the first place? Nobody from GNOME ever got involved in that discussion to bring up that issue. Now, here's the thing. There actually were real problems with the protocol that stopped GNOME from implementing it. These are not the reasons. These are just like, cope because now you don't want to do it. I don't know why people feel the need to do this and not just talk about the actual issues they have from the very start. So a whole week later, those were finally laid out by Matthias Klassen. The cursor shape protocol is following the CSS UI spec for the allowed cursor values. Unfortunately, the CSS UI spec is a bit insufficient when it comes to cursor values. There are at least two problems that should be addressed before hard coding these cursor values into a Wayland protocol. Why this wasn't brought up before the protocol was merged, I don't know. The move cursor is meant to represent the move action is selected during a drag and drop operation. That is why it's in the drag and drop section of the CSS spec. But since there's no cursor for moving things, in the resizing and strolling section, everybody is misusing move for moving windows and similar operations that are not related to drag and drop actions. Suggestion, add a northeast southwest move value that can be used instead of move for these cases. The Wayland protocol supports ask as a drag and drop action and cursor themes commonly include a drag and drop ask cursor, but the CSS spec omitted this drag action from their cursor enumeration. It should be added to fully support Wayland drag and drop in the cursor shape protocol. Both of these are completely reasonable concerns to have with the protocol and nobody would have disagreed with them if they were brought up from the start. And nobody disagrees with them when they're brought up here either. Maybe there's some arguing about the specific naming of the protocol. But, like, nobody argues that this is a thing that shouldn't be done. One thing that is brought up, though, is whether or not this change should be made in Wayland first, or should be introduced into the CSS spec and then brought back down to Wayland. And that's something that, you know, there's some debate to be had about there. There is an issue open in the W3C repo about doing this. There hasn't exactly been much in the way of conversation here. So, you know, but nobody disagrees that these are things that shouldn't be here. Also on the Wayland side, a merge request was opened to add those new curses. Ask and northeast southwest move. Again, 
literally nobody had an issue with doing this. There was issues with maybe some of the documentation here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. Since this is a sore point in GNOME slash GTK, it would be nice to move this forward without waiting for amendments to the CSS spec. And if we don't wait for that, bike shedding on names is somewhat a moot point since upstream may also pick different names. In my honest opinion, we could add these values now and wait for the CSS spec updates to add new values if necessary and deprecate the just added ones. Having this as an enum makes it somewhat easy and in fact, picking enum names most implausible to the CSS spec might ensure we don't draw ourselves into a corner in the future. And Simon Sir, who is listed as a maintainer on this spec, has no objections here. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Because frankly, this is a protocol which most of its value comes from it being a core protocol that everybody adopts. If somebody decides, well, I don't like the protocol, I'm not going to adopt it. Well, you can't have a standard that everybody relies on if there's a major party that doesn't rely on the standard. So, because this work went into place, a number of things were able to progress. The first one being that patch set from Sebastian Wick. Wayland implement the cursor shape v1 protocol, this being in Mutter. And there is a great comment in this thread. In my opinion, the case is even stronger than it seems because as I raised in the GTK issue, even GTK on Mutter has a valid use for this. App sandboxing. If an app is sandboxed and can't access files in home, then it has no way of rendering a cursor theme that's stored in home, which as far as I know, is a completely valid scenario, probably likely to become more common with immutable root Linux distros. Honestly, the solution that I would imagine that'd be suggested is, we'll just install the theme as a flat pack. <laughs> yeah. Which is the way that theming is done for, uh, application theming in a lot of cases. The visual glitching between applications is my current motivation, though this indeed just looks broken. I think the idea that some people will tolerate it and some people won't is a mistake brought on by decades of Linux desktop users being forced to accept mediocrity as the norm. But I think on Wayland, we should strive for better. The mouse cursor is global. It should act like it, just like it does on nearly every modern windowing system. Along with the far more recent change in GNOME Shell, adjust to meta cursor changes, this links back over to that mutter change. Along with this, there's also some talk to backport it to GTK3 as well. So pretty much every GTK application that you see still out there in the wild would theoretically support this solution going forward. Yes, there are still a couple of GTK2 apps, but they're very few and far between. GIMP is one of the most notable, but even that, very soon going to be on GTK3. Now, even though there was some issue getting GNOME and GTK on board with the protocol, now that they are on board, there was some issue taken with the approach that they took to getting on board. So over in that merge request to add the missing shapes, Matthias linked to the GTK implementation of the protocol. Jonas replied by saying, this seems to have already been merged in GTK without this merge request having been merged in Wayland protocols. Please avoid merging protocol implementation changes in projects where the protocol changes may be subject to change before being declared API. It puts us all in an awkward position where something potentially used in production in projects doesn't match what would eventually become the actual protocol. Matthias replies by saying, it hasn't been released and 99% of the code that was merged for supporting the perfectly well-established Cursor Shape V1 protocol, you know, the protocol that Matthias uh, pretended like wasn't something that was ever going to fit in GNOME, <laughs> if you make the implementation too cumbersome, it will simply not happen. Stones and glass houses. So you may have seen reports that GNOME is now supporting the cursor shape protocol. And that's what this is about. I am very, very happy to see progress actually being made here. Because yes, it's good that most of the Linux desktop supported it. But GTK is still quite a big toolkit. And you're going to end up using a GTK application 
even if you don't really plan to for most things. And having just one thing seem out of place is really gonna stand out. It's the reason why I avoid Libid Waiter applications because I cannot get the cursor to be the correct size no matter what I do. But what do you think? Do you think there's a problem that really mattered? Do you care about the size of your cursor, making sure your cursor is rendered consistently, even having vector cursor and being able to scale the cursor as you like? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. If you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Liberape, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Curse you.